was high up on the agenda of talks between Slovak officials and the U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo during his visit to Bratislava on Tuesday, the 12th of February. I spoke about the wider significance of this visit with a political analyst and author of a book on 25 years of Slovak-U.S. relations, Pavel Dimesh. I think that this was very important signal of new uh, administration because not visiting a country which is member of the U.N. NATO in 20 years, I think it was just simply a mistake by American administration previous and current one, but this is going to be fixing it. And I think that for Slovakia, it was also a very important moment since we are commemorating 15 years of uh, membership in the EU and NATO and 30th anniversary of Velvet Revolution. The Foreign Minister Miroslav Lajčák also said that the U.S.-Slovak relations are not dependent only on a member of the administrative coming over to Slovakia. The dialogues are there. However, what have been the past 20 years like? I think that uh, one can say that today we are friends, partner and allies with the United States. And uh, I think that the current relationship between the two states is just uh, important for uh, Slovakia, but also for the United States. In Slovakia is part of overall transatlantic family. And I think that Slovakia, unlike some members of uh, Central Europe, are having very clear-cut position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, European Union and the United States. So from this point of view, I think that it was sort of a recognition of Slovakia by State Secretary, because this uh, overall visit that he came first to Gate of Freedom on the bank of Danube River, and besides meeting top government officials, president, prime minister, foreign minister, he also had public meetings with youth where he was trying to send some of his messages, particularly highlighting freedom and United States commitment to values, which, was, which is very welcome message from member of Donald Trump's administration. And perhaps a last question, the foreign media as well as foreign political analysts see this tour, European tour, or we can even say Central European tour of Mike Pompeo as as um, campaign to fight the influence of Russia and China in the region. Do you think this too? I was following press conference by two foreign ministers, uh, Miroslav Lajčák and Mike Pompeo also. I was watching overall atmosphere of this visit uh, via streams, media. I think that surely uh, he tried to make this message as well, watching this superpowers like uh, China and Russia. But for me, the overall and most powerful message is to reconnect uh, with Central Europe, which was rather neglected. And secondly, this agenda of freedom and shared values, I think were more prominent throughout his six hour visit than some of these global issues which you mentioned, Russia and China. Concludes Pavel Demesh. Now we join Jonathan McCormick at the chess board. She's a chess grandmaster and the number one ranking chess player in Slovakia for the past 10 years. It would be a mistake, however, to assume that this one particular feature is what dominates his life. He is also a former high school teacher, has led a program for talented university students at the Socratic Institute, and is the author of several books, including one on critical thinking, a topic on which he regularly lectures at schools. He is also regularly invited by business managers to come and advise them on how chess can help them with their business plan. Why would a manager invite a chess player to advise him on how to manage his business? Well, chess looks for many people to be a very distant field of expertise as if it was on some other planet and it looks not to be very related to real life but the opposite is true because basically chess is a game of decision making in order to be good at chess you need to make several dozens of good decisions in quite a short time maybe two or three hours and so you need to know how to distinguish between a big decision and a small one uh, how to hold them how to use your rationality 
We need to know when to be courageous and when to be conservative and so on. And all these topics might be interesting for people in business because they are also facing stressful situations and also making hard decisions. So this is where these two worlds touch. And the combination of chess and business is not so unusual. For example, Gary Kasparov wrote a book which is called How Life Imitates Chess. And he's basically doing the same thing as I'm doing in Slovakia, but worldwide. He also goes around and advises businesses about how to make good decisions. Can you give us some specific examples of the type of advice you would give to a business? Well, I can maybe use two very short examples. One is about dealing with stress. I'm quite often asking the managers what are the abilities which are gone first when a person is in stress. And sometimes they answer easily and sometimes they are lost because they never ask this question. But we as chess players, we have to deal with this question because we are quite often in stress. So we need to know which abilities are working and which not. And uh, basically strategical planning and long-term planning is the ability which goes away first. So, for example, I'm advising managers not to be just troubleshooters, but to find time and quality time for planning and for making new strategies. Because once you turn into a troubleshooter and just the hearing ear for your troubled inferiors, then you will get lost in the overall strategy of the company. So that's one example. And another example is that People naturally want to make good decisions and at the same time they might get into an illusion that making good decisions means to please everyone and to make that kind of decision which will not harm any side or any person. We in chess know that this is not possible, that in chess any move has its pros and also its cons because once you are moving a piece from one square to another, you are losing control in one part of the chessboard and getting control in another part of the chessboard. So we always know that any move and any decision has both these sides. Yes, and I'm asking managers if they are aware of this and how they cope with the fact that even the best decisions they are making will necessarily, because they are decisions, harming someone. Some managers are coping well, some are closing their eyes in front of this fact, and some are deeply troubled with the fact that they are harming their interiors all the time, and they need to find a balance. Take us straight to stronger cars to the corner of the line. benefit people in their personal lives to think about these same issues that you raise with businesses? Well, I think that generally thinking deeply about your life and your situation in life uh, shouldn't harm you. Uh, on the other hand, it should be quite beneficial not to go on as an automaton through your days. But I really get this question in a bit different way. People are asking me, like, should I give my kids into a chess class? Should they learn chess? And what would they get from chess for their normal life, let's say? And to this question, I'm answering usually that they will be patient, they will maybe be more rational, and most importantly, they will have an experience of depth. Because in chess, there is a quite a lot hidden in the depth and you need to unravel and uncover it very slowly. It's quite similar to whiskey tasting or something, you know. You cannot do it in five minutes. And I think that kids in these days have quite a lot of problems getting concentrated for a longer period of time and have the experience of that. So this is something that is just coming. Carlos Jonathan McCormick talking to Jano Marcos. After the song by Ricardo Love, we will get to our last highlight of the past week. Actually, for all radio lovers, it was the highlight of the whole year, the World Radio Day. <laughs> Na 
naše tiene sa zrazu plazia každý inou stranou. Už asi nie si, kto prvý vstane a pohne sa odtiaľ to preč tou stránou. Už asi nie si, aké nepoznané, tak to život vyzerá za začkou. Zvlášť. Už asi nie si, poviem to máme. Naše stopy v prachu nech teda rozmočí dášť. Už asi nie si. Vidím samé čierne diery Už asi nie si Len škryp od dverí To nám dvom zahrčí, že takto budeme žiť v miery Už asi nie si Radio Slovakia International Slovakia Today Making Slovakia heard to the world